I'm going to tell you exactly how I got a bunch of great deals off of the MLS. So everybody says, oh, there's no good deals on the MLS. But I've actually found every house hack deal that I've purchased and a lot of other rental property deals that we've purchased off of the MLS. So there is a way to get great deals off the MLS. You don't only have to buy off market while well, both can work great. Specifically, house hack deals are much easier to buy off the MLS because they take a long time to close. They need to be in a reasonable condition to close usually too. It's just a lot harder when you're buying off MLS, buying with cash and being able to close fast is where you get your advantages. So when you're looking to buy great deals on the MLS, house hack or rental property deals, there's a few things you need to look for. And it's just almost the exact opposite of how you're gonna see a lot of houses listed. You wanna look for the house with the one or two sentence description. Uh, good property, you know, great area, uh, come, come get, get it, it'll sell fast, like stuff like that. Just like they put no effort into it at all when they put the description together. If it has a terrible description or well, sometimes even no description, that's awesome. Look for that. Also, when you're looking for properties that don't have any descriptions, you're gonna to wanna to look for them with horrible pictures. Either they have horrible pictures, they don't have enough pictures. A lot of times agents will take really bad pictures either with their cell phone and you say, I can't see anything in the property. This is so awful, why would I go see this property? I can't even see anything. That's awesome because a lot of other people are gonna feel that way. And because they feel that way, so many fewer people are gonna come see these properties that that's how you can get a great deal. When there's no pictures, when there's bad pictures, that's absolutely something to look out for. You can also look for language in MLS listings like motivated seller, bring all offers. But don't discount the listings that look great or sorry, that sound like, oh, we're, we're really interested in finding a seller. Look for the ones that don't have a great description. Look for the ones that have bad pictures and look for the ones that just don't have all the information in them. If you're saying, where are the rents? Where's the description of the home? How can I tell how many bedrooms are in each unit? How can I tell where the opportunity is? Look for something like that where you need to do a little legwork, schedule a showing with your real estate agent and you'll figure it all out. Sometimes you have to do the work to go see the property to really understand what's going on. A good agent is gonna make sure you can see everything online and you're just going to see the property because you're so excited. An agent that's not doing a good job is gonna do as little work as possible. Maybe they're scared to go in and take pictures because there's tenants in there. Use that to your advantage. When you're looking for properties that are listed on the MLS, look for stuff that just doesn't attract you at all. Terrible listing, terrible pictures, you can't find out any information, and you have to go to the property. And once you find that out, you can start to understand why the seller might be in a bad position. If you go to the property and it's really bad condition, I bought a duplex in East Austin, the seller wasn't necessarily struggling on the property, but he was charging really low rent, so it looked really unattractive. He had two pictures on the listing, there was not a lot of information in the listing. At the same time, I went into the units, which the tenants were really nice, went into the units and they were falling apart. They were disgusting. One of the units was had really ag aggressive dogs in it. My first duplex that I bought, actually, so many people I talked to after I bought it said, oh, I tried to go show that property. The tenants were scaring me away. They were yelling at me. They were saying, you can't come in. We happened to go early enough in the morning that the aggressive tenants were still asleep. And the grandmother let us in, we toured the property, saw that, yeah, it's in bad condition, but carpet, paint, and lights, and it's gonna be a brand new unit. So, you know, do stuff like that. Uh, again, uh, on, that, on that same note, find properties that are hard to see. If it, if it doesn't look attractive online, it's not attracting you to come see it, and you go to see it, and it's hard to see, so many people will just give up right there when they can't get in the property, but don't give up. That's your, your chance to get a great deal because so many other people are not coming because it looks terrible online and so many other people are not trying because they couldn't get in that first time. I've never had it where I've not been able to eventually get a showing. Maybe I make an offer, get a showing after that, or maybe I have to come back one, two, or three times 
even to get a showing, but I get a great deal. So take advantage of that. If it's difficult and if it doesn't look great, that's your opportunity.